My name is Mahmoud Razai Kamalabad. I'm originally from Iran and I came to this country in 1978. And uh, during that years, I went through schools and a study. I started to drive taxi. So during the night, I was studying the taxi and at, in the morning, I went to the school full time. So that was the basically, and after that, I was graduated from the Bachelor of Fine Arts. I start, I finished the high school, interior design, and uh, I went to the military, I was in service, I was a nurse, and I was very interested in the medical because it was very interesting for me, but I couldn't study because I, my background was the art. I started to find a job and I couldn't find a job, and finally I opened the business and I started to work. That's what I'm doing now. The shop, I started in 93. But my artwork is last 30 years. Life is 3D. I express myself through 3D. And I made the object. So by doing that, I'm hoping people, when they look to the object, they are able to understand what I'm trying to do to help them to understand my life. I could not write. I have a difficulty for writing. If I could write very good, I put all my thinking to the writing. Because I'm not able to express myself through language. I express myself through 3D. Every time when I have a problem through religion and I start to look into it and I create a one piece of the artwork. This one take me 17, 18 years. Yes, it even a couple of times changed, maybe four times changed until I came to this system. And I made it. Now I put a lot of doctor, different people into it. And everybody says, Mahmoud, he does something, but we don't know. Is a biologist doctor, he's writing the paper on this machine. It's going to come out very soon. So uh, we are working on that one. So see what happens. In life, a sphere is a complete form of the universe. Circle, sphere form. We Welcome to Happiness in the City. This is Barbara. And today, I'd like us to focus on a very important topic, and that is food. We have a situation in uh, many countries that created uh, a, a lot of conflict between traditional ways in which people uh, ate food and certain mechanisms that created new ways of supplying food. Now, I have great fortune that I grew up in families that still lived by traditional patterns of food. Uh, that meant that food primarily was purchased in local markets and stores um, that supplied local markets and it was food of high quality but it was expensive so uh, a lot of income had to be focused on food and there were certain ways uh, that um, were involved with food preparation washing, cooking, um, how people ate food often together as families or friends uh, food uh, consumption was also an opportunity to talk, to communicate and to share enjoyment and pleasure of life. So food was associated 
with affirmation of pleasure of life, being alive, food and drink, of course. Uh, I use the word food uh, as a concept that would include uh, the beverages as well as the um, solids. And the frequency, traditional frequency of food in um, the families I grew up with was five, five times a day. It was breakfast, second breakfast, dinner lunch, what today we call lunch, the biggest meal of the day, five o'clock tea and supper. Supper was the lightest, but the frequency, timing and regularity of food was considered extremely important. So it was not only about numbers such as calorie intake, but it was about organization of time around nurture and nutrition. And that way of organizing daily life around food, life and enjoyment of life created very happy people, very healthy people. When you look at pictures of people from the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, even all the way 80s, they look good. They looked happy, strong, filled with energy and joy of life. And it was irrespective about uh, what was happening in politics. So a lot of misunderstanding today is that life in East Central Europe, in Russia, in all the countries connected with, um, with them, but also the same applies to, to other European countries, France and Italy, Germany, what I'm saying really applies to the way Europe, and I include Russia in Europe because frankly geographically half of Russia is Europe and half of Russia is Asian. So Russia is unique in this sense in Europe, but it is a European country. And it had to deal with the collapse of um, Romanov House in 1917, uh, 18 and then all kinds of things started happening that um, started disrupting the rhythm of nurture and nutrition and um, the extreme example was what happened in Europe um, in uh, European part of uh, then Soviet Empire in Ukraine where many people starved to death. And the great effort was made to cut back the traditional way of nurture and nutrition. And that was irrespective of what was happening politically. So in order to understand why people in those times looked healthy and good is because in daily life they lived like they've been taught by their ancestors. And then there were all of those other things connected with how legal financial system was organized and that was communism and if you talk to Russians as I was growing up, I had um, a lot of encounters, they all believed that communism was a curse on Russia because Russia always considered herself to be a royal heritage and royal power can see today as soon as it was possible Russia came back to signs and um, images of royal power. The same with Poland. Look at the eagle, 
there, there's a crown on the ego and I was very um, involved in making sure this eagle goes back to the traditional royal Polish image with a crown. Because lack of crown is a form of humiliation. Crown is a symbol of victory, strength and national unity or imperial unity. Imperial unity means unity among diverse nations. So today we have a situation in which people started judging food, nurture and nutrition by political terms and by numbers, how many calories a person uh, gets to eat, uh, the portions, etc., etc., with total ignorance of the traditional way of eating. You have nation of China. Nation of China never gave up traditional ways of food, culture, and we have a situation now in which the, the overwhelming information about diets brings people to despair about life because if you have traditional rhythm of meals uh, eating with other people consider um, consider this is an opportunity to create um, loving pleasurable connection with those who eat with you and I understand that the affection in the heart is part of human nature. A child is born and the first thing after birth, child is touched, so it connects sense of touch with pleasure of life, being alive, and smiles because it's really cool to be alive, to be born, and to see other people. The child um, sees, hears, all the senses start um, happening, and then the child is fed. And the first meal of a child, it always creates pleasure. So pleasure and loving affection connected with food is foundation of will to live. When people are forced to focus only on calories and dietary aspects of food at the expense of all the other things connected with nutrition and nurture, they end up connecting food and drink to pain. And um, eating with others is painful experience because the hearts were blocked on that foundational part of human nature and human law which is to associate eating and drinking with pleasure. This is also biblical what I'm saying. God says that under good leadership people eat, drink, and are happy. And he thinks that it's very good to uh, eat, drink, and be happy. There's um, a certain affirmation from kingdom himself, from God who created us to do that. So those who disrupt that also disrupt the very design of human nature in the image of God. And the result is people start associating uh, food and drink with pain, then they start feeling sick, they need medication, and they need more medication, and then they get over medicated or go into illegal drugs, 
and so many die before they time because the bodies just break down. The, the bodies do not recognize medication as food and drink, do not recognize that um, hunger is the same as pain, hunger should be satisfied with pleasure and when there is pain as a substitute for hunger and has to be healed, the body just collapses. So when we are talking in many countries, but primarily in the United States of America, about opioid crisis, over medication, ridiculously expensive um, price for medical care and medication, we cannot address this issue without first understanding what is the root problem, the root cause that created such, such a serious collapse of health in America. And when we come back to systematic evaluation of where the mistakes were made, then all that energy that is focused on creation of diets would be focused on creation of happy food intakes, nutrition and nurture and connections with other people. And that is one of the foundations to eliminate hatred that entered the world in such a vicious way. And I think that when we when, uh, when we start respecting the nature of food as the foundational resource to make us happy, then we'll not search to other um, resources to satisfy hunger. And that good rhythmic nutrition focused on frequency of meals as well as quality of meals and companionship that would reduce a lot of the pain that right now is so bad that causes people to search for medication as a substitute for joy of normal eating and drinking. And I think that we need somehow to help the government focus on that too, because the government is not really involved in any way whatsoever in understanding that frequency of meals is as important as caloric intake. So this is an opportunity that would allow us to reconnect with what is best in our heritage and also what is the only way to strengthen our blood and our hearts and our lives and restore pleasure in living. So in order to stop the despair of death we have to come back to pleasure of life. There was a very tragic um, accident involving a very famous cook who spent his life teaching people about pleasure of meals and ended up he was in despair of a will to live and he passed away um, before his time in a tragic way. After this I really started thinking a lot about the importance of pleasure of life because 
if you feel pleasure of life, you don't want to harm yourself or other people. Sometimes I think that one of the problems in violence today in America is caused by that uh, disorganization in the way people eat and drink. And it created a situation in which people hate each other and are violent to each other instead of enjoying being together, eating together, drinking together. In other words, that vacuum of enjoying food together created this um, sense of anger, despair and violence. So if we want to restore a sense of security and safety in the whole nation and in the world, we have to come back to the rhythm of life, rhythm of the resources for life, eating and drinking as our ancestors did, and creating joy and pleasure of life and looking at our neighbors, at our family members as partners at a dinner table, at a lunch, at a supper, at a breakfast, at the second breakfast, at five o'clock tea, not as competitors for the food and um, potential um, Uh, potential um, dangers to someone's life. In other words, instead of eating together, people start looking at other people as dangers to their life, which is another way of distorted thinking. Natural way of thinking is to look at another human being as another human being, just like us, with the same needs and to derive pleasure in the companionship that comes from being at a table, sharing meals, looking forward to um, eating together. And I think that when we understand how important it is to come back to this, that will restore the will to life in America and that would automatically create a situation in which people will do everything to sustain life, to nurture and nourish life, and then they will avoid dangerous situations, disconnectedness, hunger that comes from um, eating infrequently, eating alone, uh, eating in anger, so I think that all that energy that is focused today on forcing people to lose weight should be instead directed to teach people how to eat in the way the ancestors ate. Of course today we have food industry that uh, is involved with um, uh, farmers and supply of life and there was an article recently that is available on Drudge Report which talked about how many American farmers, food suppliers, commit suicide. So the very people who create foundation for joy of life became overwhelmed with despair and they uh, violently ended their lives. And God understands that, that by the time they did it, they were already in a despair that blocked their proper understanding and will. So they made this horrible choice to end their lives because they didn't see an alternative to connect their lives to pleasure and legal and financial security. 
So I would focus on spending resources to create foundation of joy and happiness around the entire um, food supply from those who work on the land, who grow animals, um, farmers, the most amazing people on earth because they are the uh, people who are closest to the creation of life force itself. So they should be nurtured and nourished too as a very unique and in many ways privileged group of people. And then of course all the other people connected with um, supplies of our food, the truck drivers, um, the store employees, uh, everything that is connected to create the applications of um, what our farmers create, grow and breed to our daily life. Thank you so much for listening to uh, my reflections on this very important topic and I believe that God will help us move in the right direction and to restore focus on life and not focus so much on politics and all kinds of conflicts connected with this because most of them would be resolved anyway if people are happy and satisfied. Thank you so much for listening and I'll be talking to you next week during another edition.